Hi, I know it's been a long time since I've uh, recorded one of these videos, but um, today I just want to talk about this uh, poem, The Tennis Court Oath, by the, uh, the American poet John Ashbery. Um, I just find this poem, uh, I found this poem really fascinating and intriguing for a long time because uh, it's very evocative, even though it seems to be nonsensical and like it's just a collection of uh, impressions and memories that just on the surface um, don't seem to mean anything, but somehow it, uh, the use of language and the atmosphere that it evokes is just really interesting. So uh, I just want to uh, read the poem. What had you been thinking about? The face studiously bloodied, heaven blotted region. I go on loving you like water, but there is a terrible breath in the way of all of this. You were not elected president, yet won the race. All the way through fog and drizzle, when you read it was sincere, the coast stammered with unintentional villages, the horse strains, fatigued, I guess, the calls, I worry. The water beetle head, why, of course, reflecting all. Then you redid, you were breathing. I thought going down to mail this of the kettle, you jabber it as easily in the yard. You come through, but an incomparable, but are incomparable, the lovely tent mystery. You don't want surrounded the real you dance. In the spring, there was clouds. The muletress approached in the hall, the lettering easily visible along the edge of the times. In a moment, the bell would ring, but there was time for the carnation laughed here or a couple of other. No, to one in yon house, the doctor at Philip had come over the road, turning in toward the corner of the wall, his hat on reading it carelessly, as if to tell you your fears were justified. The blood shifted, you know those walls, wind, wind off the earth and made him shrink. Undeniably an oboe now, the young were there, there was candy to decide the sharp edge of the garment like a particular cry, not intervening, called the dog, he's coming, he's coming, with an emotion felt it sink into peace. There was no turning back, but the end was in sight. He chose this moment to ask her in detail about her family and the others. The person pleaded, have more of these, not stripes, on the tunic, or the porch chairs will teach you about men, what it means, to be one in a million pink stripe. And now could go away, the three approach the doghouse, the reef. Your daughter's dream of my son, understand prejudice, darkness in the hole, the patient finished. They could all go home now, the hole was dark, lilacs blowing across his face, glad he brought you. So that's the poem, uh, and as you can see, it's sort of disjointed and chaotic and uh, not easy to make sense of. It has this kind of polyphonic feeling where it just feels like a bunch of memories and voices and there seems to be some narrative under the surface, but it's very difficult to, to make sense of what it actually is. It's just something very subjective and that's what makes it, for me, that's what makes it so interesting. And uh, to close off, I'm just going to read Ashbury's own uh, description of the poem, which I think just adds another layer of uh, mystery. Um, it strikes me that the dislocated, incoherent fragments of images which make up the movement of the poem are probably like the experience you get from a train pulling out of a station of no particular significance. The dirt, the noises, the sliding away seem to be a movement in the poem. The poem was probably trying to express that, not for itself, but as an epitome of something experienced. I think that is what my poems are about. So I just find that very interesting to try and capture that, you know, stream of consciousness feeling of all these different, you know, impressions and uh, sense impressions and memories just uh, colliding with each other. And uh, in this, you know, it seems contradictory that it seems meaningless or but also meaningful at the same time. And there's kind of a paradox at play. How you, something can be evocative, something can somehow manage to be evocative, even though it doesn't seem to mean anything on the surface. So those are just my two cents in that poem uh yeah